Students Monday. Hello, citizens, and welcome back to Maintenance Monday. Are you a citizen? Are you a citizen? I believe you are, but if you are not, you can easily become a citizen right now, today. No paperwork needed. All you have to do is push that little red button that says subscribe. It's going to go gray. If your button is gray right now, you are already a citizen. If it is not gray, then we've been waiting just for you. All right, so today's Maintenance Monday is a good one because it is viewer's choice. It's the viewer's choice, and I love viewer's choice. What that simply means is that someone has wrote in or given me a question, and based on that question through the Word of God, I had an answer for them today, and I'm excited about it. So let's find out what that question was. And now if you're here, then you already know what to do. Like and share. So they ask, in the Bible, do it speak of protecting your peace or anything like that where? These are direct quotes from them. So again, in the Bible, do it speak of protecting your peace or anything like that and where? Also, they gave me a little bit more background that I'm going to give you again, direct quotes. It says, I am trying to say that I want to protect the peace that God has given me. I want to protect the Holy Spirit inside of me from anything or anyone that could come to take me off course. I want to protect my walk with Christ, letting go of anything or anyone that is not pushing me. You get what I mean? Then they say, people may ask why I do the things I do or why I don't go certain places why I don't entertain certain company. And the first thing I want to say to you is that is a beautiful desire. It is an absolute beautiful desire. And I want to help us through the scripture guide us to consider another perspective. Okay, so through the scripture, I want to help guide us to consider another perspective. The first thing is they said that they wanted to protect their peace. And so let's look up that word protect and it means to defend or guard from attack, invasion, loss, annoyance, insult. Then it says cover or shield from injury or danger. So think about protection. So I want to protect my peace. Defend or guard from attack, invasion, loss, annoyance, or insult, right? I completely get it. Let's talk about some functions of peace. The functions of peace. Are you ready for this? Let's go to Philippians 4. And it reads, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So the first thing is be careful for nothing. But in everything, what do you do? You pray. And right, you make your requests known unto God. And what does he do? The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So what's the function of peace? To keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So it's oftentimes we look at peace and all we're just thinking about is that I want it to be cool, I want it to be calm, I want to be quiet, all of these things. But I want you to know that peace has a function and it is to keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Two things I want you to see from this scripture. First, that peace has a function to keep your heart and mind and then how? Through Christ Jesus. Now, this is important, right? But what, what does keep mean? It means to preserve. Right, preserve, guard. There are things that are designed to and things that are by design, by design will shift us out of position. By design will um, cause us to be more anxious, to cause us to be worrisome. Um, these are things that are designed to or by design just happen to put us in a place that is societally accepted that you would lose your cool. Right, that you would be stripped of your peace, that we would become anxious or fearful or anything else that would keep us from sweet sleep and sweet rest. But I want you to do what the Bible says, which is go to God and tell him all about it. Don't take the situation, don't take the rehearsing of the situation, don't take the emotions nor the worry. Take a prayer to the Lord. And what is God going to do? Is he going to give us the answer we want? Is that what the scripture says? No, it's not that he's going to give us the answer we want. Instead, he's going to give us a peace 
that surpasses all understanding. I want you to imagine yourself in a boat, right, on water where all you hear is chirping birds, an occasional one, where you, hear, you can hear the moving water. Maybe you hear fish, but for the most part, it's quiet. It's peaceful. It feels good. And you're just riding, right? Am I going through? Are you going through? Will we go through? Absolutely. Maybe we'll even see a dead end sign up ahead. Maybe we'll even see um, under construction up ahead. Maybe we'll um, even see some debris from the hurricane last week. Or maybe we're on tornado watch. Maybe we're going crazy or it seems like our life is going crazy. But we have peace. And this peace is from God. I remember a while ago, um, Apostle Sutton, she said to me, she was going through so much. It was like one thing after another. And I would ask her how she's doing. And she would always say, I'm steady. And for a while, I would be upset. Like, no, I want to know how you're doing. I felt like she was shutting me out. And I was concerned about her. But she never wavered on how she was doing. She would tell me what's going on, but I wanted to know what her emotional state was. But her emotional state was unchanging because she was steady. Because peace will keep you steady. At the time, I didn't understand it. Now I understand both from thankful God and grateful to the experiences that God has given me that you can indeed just be steady. Steady. And what does that mean? I want you to see this man on this side, on that side, up here, and wherever else he goes in this same condition, right? Just in peace. The peace of God will keep us steady. And how do I know that? Let's look at another function of peace. Colossians 3, 14. So we've seen the man on the boat. Remember, we go to God, we pray, we make our requests known unto him. And he will give us peace, not just an answer we're looking for, right? He will give us peace that surpasses understanding, which means that indeed, you probably should feel a little anxious or worried, excited, right? But he'll give you something that surpasses all of that, even though it doesn't make sense to most people, but you've got peace from God. Here's another function of peace, Colossians 3, 14 and 15. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of peace perfectness and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. So what is the function of peace here? To rule. The function of peace is to rule. Why am I saying that? Because you're so busy trying to protect your peace when peace actually should be ruling, right? Peace rules. And what is rule? Regulate govern. Actually, the definition reads regulate governing conduct. Rule is to conduct, right? Which means there may be a storm, sure, but am I afraid? No. No, I'm ruled by peace because the peace of God rules our heart. And all we can do is just be thankful, right? Be thankful because we could complain about a whole bunch of things, but the thing that matters the most has already been taken care of, and that's our soul, and that's why we could stay at peace when we are in God. I can be at peace. Amen. So when people ask why you don't go here or why you don't go there or why you don't engage this conversation or why you allow this or why you don't allow that or um, what's stopping you here, you need to start saying peace won't let me. Peace won't let me. See, I'm being ruled. Where am I? Ruled, right? I'm being ruled by peace. Peace won't let me go. Peace won't let me do. Peace won't let me stop. Peace won't let me relinquish. Peace keeps me connected. You need to recognize what's on the inside of you. It's peace on the inside of you. Amen? Stay with God. Stay with God. So what are some things that are normally accepted to strip us of peace as we experience it? Look at this. We got lost a job. These are some things that most people would find out if you've gone bankrupt, right? Especially if you had a whole bunch of money. Now, some of y'all didn't have but but five. I don't think the world's ended. Come on. You nearly look bankrupt in any way. Less job, right? Lost job. Bankruptcy. Abuse. What are some more things that we can find ourselves if we lose it all? The whole world will be like, oh my gosh, that's it, right? Family rips. Sickness, heartbreaks, tribulations, and the, I mean that just covers everything. Tribulations, miscarriage. Sometimes we forget about things like miscarriage. That's heartbreaking. 
I remember someone that I love so deeply and they had a miscarriage. And I think I cried more than they cried. In fact, I was on the phone while they was telling me, just trying not to let them know I was crying. And when we got up, I just boo who cried, right? Because miscarriage didn't only affect them, it affected all of us, right? It affected me. It mattered to me. And I don't know, even in the world, oftentimes, things like this get ignored, right? A woman that desires to have a child that can't have children. But I want you to know that no matter what you're facing, right? No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, Every single one of these things can be going on, but you can be in a state that is consistent. And even though you're going through all of this, your condition will always equal peace. You can be going through it, right? Right? No matter what it is, you can be going through it, and it will always equal peace. Amen? All right? So my encouragement to you is to stay with God, right? When gossip arises, or maybe we've been, we need to vent. Or maybe we've been a listening ear too long, right? Can we be honest? Sometimes I'm not going through it. But I've been listening to you go through it. And that's got me anxious, right? That's got me in a place that I haven't been. That's got me with a defiled conscience. That's got me feeling some kind of way, right? Maybe, maybe it's me, maybe it's them. And it's starting to interfere with my personal relationships and their functions, right? Um, when our convictions shift, and we have to deceive in order to shift to these new convictions, that's the absence of peace. I want you to know there's no peace there. And that means it's time to look at ourselves and say, what does peace want? What does peace want? Because remember, peace keeps our heart and mind. Peace rules our heart and minds. So peace must have a desire, right? So what does peace want? No matter what we are facing, right? No matter what we are facing, no matter what our condition is, we can always have peace. Be steady, right? I am peace. I have peace. It was given to me, and that is what I am made up of. And it's not just me. It's you too. How do I know? Let's go to John 14. John 14, and it reads, 22 says, Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my saying and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. So look at this. Judas said, Lord, how are you going to manifest yourself to us but the world's not going to see it right jesus said if a man love me because this is the key here he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him right so i'm we're going to come we're going to be one with him he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings they they won't obey me if they don't love me they won't obey me and the word which you hear is not mine i'm not saying this this is what the father has sent me right right which sent me has said come on then 25 says, these things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, watch this, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. The peace that I'm giving you will keep you from being troubled. The peace that I'm giving you will keep you from being afraid. It is not God's design that we have troubled hearts and souls and minds. That's not God's design. It is not God's design that we are in constant conflict with one another. That is not God's design. It is God's design that we are in peace. And what is peace? Peace is when we are in obedience to God. When you're obedient to God. I can tell you like this. There have been times where I've wanted things outside of God. I can tell you that. There have been times where I wanted something that wasn't the will of God. And there have been times where I went on and got that. And I had no peace. Right? I might have enjoyed it for a moment, but I was like, ah! Right? I had no peace. But then there were times where there was something that I did want. And I didn't get it. I not just didn't get it, I didn't pursue it. I said no to it. And even though it was hard to say no at that moment, 
Man, it felt so good later to know that I stood the test, I survived, and I won. I won when I chose peace. I want you to think of peace like that boat ride again on calm waters, right? Maybe there's some birds chirping. You can hear, it's so still, you can hear the water moving. Maybe a fish jumps out, right? Just a little, just peaceful. But I want you to see that same boat. Be on that same boat ride. And imagine that boat riders now on the interstate <laughs> in a major city, on a busy interstate in a major city, in the middle of holiday traffic. I want you to see this boat. Look at all the things that are, because I want you to know it can be busy. It doesn't have to be bad all the time. Sometimes busyness can just have us conflicted in trouble, right? And sometimes it can be conflict with, with your loved ones, right? It can be the absence of money, the need for money, or maybe just the greed for money. Stormy clouds, right? Just seems like one thing after another. Accidents, mistakes, this, that, and the other frustration, all kinds of things are coming. I want you to imagine yourself in that situation, but I want you to also imagine just like him. Do you notice that he hasn't changed? I'm here to help him. That's a revelation. Do you notice that he had all these things have shown up, but he is in the same condition? That's what peace will do. That's what peace will do. You can be on a busy interstate in a major city in the middle of holiday traffic, but you don't have to be in road rage. Right? You can get cut off and get flicked off and you don't have to chase the person down. I'm just trying to help somebody. You can see somebody trying to merge and you know good and well they have plenty of opportunity to merge in the back. But traffic is too heavy. So they wait till the absolute last minute to merge. And let's tell the truth. We be sitting up there like, nope, nope, I ain't letting you in because you should have waited. Right? Everybody's trying to get somewhere. No, you can be patient and we can let people in. Nobody and nothing can actually steal our peace. Because our peace rules. So what do you do? And what am I saying? I'm saying that peace comes from God. It comes from God. And protects and guides us more than us needing to put our night, night and shining armor on to protect it. Peace comes from God. And it's designed to protect us. Your peace is your help. So what do you do? Be obedient. Follow that conscience when it has not been compromised. When you feel awkward, don't choose pride and override it. Know that that awkward feeling is your spirit man saying, no, I don't want to do this like this. I like the way I used to be, used to be in God, amen? Don't have conversations that perpetuate isolation or division. Don't ruin covenant relationships because of your coveting practices, okay? Be obedient and know being obedient is also responding to your conscience. That is saying, this is not me, or that's not it. Respond to that conscience. Respond to that awkward feeling of the fact that your conscience is defiled and go back and get it right. That's what it's all about. So don't think you have to protect your peace. Your peace will rule your heart and mind, and it doesn't need your protection. All you have to do is stay in fellowship with God and be obedient to him, and you will keep your peace, and it will surpass all understanding. Remember to like, remember to share, remember to comment. Please leave your impression if you've been given one, right? If, if one was impressed upon you and have a peaceful, ruling day. Bye. Next week on Maintenance Monday. What does it mean to you when you see somebody ride up in a Mercedes? I was promptly in a $2 estate sale dress. Why? Because the votes were already there. Sure. She's living a good life. This is just a snapshot of who she is. And my question to you is, is this enough information?